welcome everybody. Happy Friday. Uh, welcome to today's Shippo service hours. Um, before we get started, just a quick housekeeping note. You will see a uh, Q&A box uh, at the bottom of your panel. Uh, put all of your questions in there and we will try to get to them throughout the conversation today. Uh, we'll also directly answer your questions in there as well. So put it in there. If it is specific to your account, unfortunately, we won't get to it today. It takes us some time to look into it. We want to make sure we get you the right answer. So if we don't get to it today, uh, we will reach out to you or you can email us at support at .com. So let's go ahead and get started. Before we jump into it, uh, I'm going to introduce you to everyone that will guide you through today's webinar. I'm Joanne. I lead the customer success team here at Shippo. Um, and I've got two experts with me today. Sergio, why don't you tell them a little bit more about you? Thanks, Joe. Um, hello, everyone. Thanks for taking the time to join this webinar today. It's going to be exciting. We're going to give you guys a lot of good information uh, to get you going. So my name is Sergio. Um, I work here on the sales team. I work directly um, with Leon. I work with Joe also. Been here for about a year. Um, I don't have too much background in e-commerce, but I would say over this last year, I've become somewhat of an expert. So um, yeah, I'm very excited to teach you guys a little bit more. Um, normally I work with our larger customers, but I've worked with everyone from you know small mom and pops to uh, mid-market companies and definitely a lot of enterprise companies as well. So yeah, I'm excited to get going today. Hey everyone, my name is Leon. I'm on the marketing team. I've been at Shippo for about nine months now. Uh, but I've been in the e-commerce space for several years prior to that. And just like Sergio said, really excited to be here today. Talk a little bit more about Shippo, the shipping industry, and how to navigate those waters because it can certainly be rocky when you're starting off. Thank you both. So let's get into it. Uh, why don't we tell everybody a little bit more about Shippo before we break down kind of the important steps as they are getting started. And for that, I'm going to go to you, Sergio. Sorry, mute button. Um, yeah, so uh, Shippo, you know, what, what exactly do we do? This is a great question. Um, so, I mean, in a nutshell, what we do is we are a platform that's really designed to save you time and money when it comes to shipping. We are a shipping platform. So, of course, our bread and butter is having the ability to connect to a store. Uh, but we have other options around that. If you don't have a store, we're definitely going to get into that a little bit later. Uh, but really mainly what we do is we connect with stores, we connect with retailers, clothing lines, et cetera, uh, to bring in those orders into the system um, to be able to fulfill. So we avoid having to go directly to these carriers. What we do is give you the ability from your business or from your home to essentially print out labels and not only print out labels, but print out those labels at a heavily discounted rate. So we connect with carriers like DHL, USPS, and even UPS to provide you discounts. And then we also connect with a ton of other carriers, um, you know, like FedEx or even like GSO, LSO, things of that nature um, as well to provide your own accounts. Um, and then we offer some like post purchase features as far as tracking goes. Uh, we give you the ability to provide shipping details, uh, delivery notifications, shipment notifications, um, and then also packing slips as well. So not just the labels. And then essentially you can just manage your orders as well. So within Shippo, we give you a dashboard to be able to manage those orders, take a look at them, see what's fulfilled, what's unfulfilled. Uh, maybe you want to look at all your orders that have been delivered or have failed. Uh, we give you the insight to all of those options. So kind of to circle back here and, and bring it home is we are, we, we essentially remove the headache from traditional shipping for you guys by saving you time and money. Thanks, Sergio. Um, and today's webinar is really centered around our newer customers. Um, what we saw as we went into COVID times was a spike in new customers really starting to uh, ship. Um, they had to move online, obviously, because in-person wasn't an option. And so we had a ton of questions around how to really get started. Uh, so what we're going to do today is just break down all of the steps 
to really get started in SHPO and all the little possibilities that you can do within SHPO. Um, so let's get started. One of the first questions that I had as I was learning this space and learning about what our customers do and um, how they start to ship was packaging, one of the most simple yet a little complicated uh, aspect of shipping. Um, and Sergio, why don't you walk us through how customers think about packaging? Yeah, so this is gonna be one of your initial thoughts um, after you've created your business, maybe you've started making your products, you've ordered your products, whatever it may be, your website's launched, you're ready to go. Um, then you start getting orders, exciting, right? You start getting orders, you're gonna start making some money, you wanna send these things out. How am I sending them out? That's one of the first questions you're gonna ask. So you need to think about just a few things. Um, and it's not you know, exactly rocket science here, don't kill yourself trying to determine this, but you wanna think about what is it that I'm shipping? Um, do my items need to get to their destination fast? Um, are they time sensitive? You know, are they fragile? Are they big? Are they small? Um, these are some of the things you need to think about because that's really going to determine the packaging that you're using. Uh, the name of the game here is, is savings, right? We want to save the most money. We want to save the most material. We want to save the most space. Um, so when you're thinking about these things, you want to be able to send out your packages as light as possible and as small as possible. If you have the ability to send out your items in a poly mailer, maybe a bubble mailer, a padded envelope, something like that, um, that's what you want to do. You want to make sure that you're sending it out in something as small as possible. I totally get it. If you're sending out things that are fragile, it's not going to make sense to send out in a poly mailer. You have to do a box. If you have to do a box, totally do a box. But if you, if you can, I'm talking about clothing lines, uh, maybe accessories, things of that nature, uh, jewelry, if you will. If it works, you definitely want to send them out in small packages because it's going to do a few things for you and for everyone. First and foremost, it's going to make your shipping costs lower. So because your packages are smaller, because they are lighter, it's going to cost less. If it costs less to you, it's going to cost less to your customers. Everybody's happy. Um, another thing is the packaging itself is going to be cheaper. Uh, poly mailers, padded envelopes, they're going to be cheaper than boxes. So that's more savings in your pocket. And then another really cool thing, it's going to take up less space. So you can have, I don't know, maybe a stack of 10 boxes that's going to take up this amount of space. You can have hundreds of poly mailers that will probably take out, take up, you know, roughly the same amount of space. So it's going to save some things for you. It's going to save you money. It's going to save you space. Um, it's going to work out better for your customers as well. And then also another thing you need to think about, um, you know, are, do these items need to go out fast? Um, if they need to go out fast, if they're heavy, if they're big, maybe flat rates might work. And then that's very important because if it is a flat rate, then you do have to use branded packaging. You will have to use branded packaging, for example, from USPS to send out those items via flat rate. So that's another thing to think about. I have clients myself that only do flat rate. So they've already solved the problem very quickly. They can go to USPS online. They can go to USPS location and they can get free packaging. Um, do keep in mind when you use these flat rate, or excuse me, when you get these flat rate boxes, it's free, but you do have to use that specific service level. So it goes both ways. In order to use flat rate, you need flat rate boxes. If you have a flat rate box, it has to go out as a flat rate service level. Um, so those are some things to think about. And again, I think really what we're going back, uh, back to here is minimizing everything, you know, minimizing costs, minimizing space. So think about what you're sending. Good rule of thumb, if it's possible, always send in, in a poly mailer, it's gonna work better. If you want something custom or needs to go out in a box, so be it, but always look to reduce. Awesome, thanks Sergio. And you touched on this a little bit, uh, obviously the next kind of question that comes with packaging to think about is costs. Um, costs to get your package out to your customer it includes, um, it includes packaging, but also distance. Can you walk us through that as well? Yeah, so minimizing costs. So this is, uh, I mean, what I just mentioned earlier, that's step one to really minimize costs. Some other things really there are, are to dial it in. So yeah, you've got your packaging ready to go. Um, you know, how are my items gonna go out? What service levels am I gonna use? Um, things of that nature. So like you see right here in the image, uh, there's some of our sample service levels based on weight, based on zone. So, um, you know, a, a really good rule of thumb here is if possible, try and again, minimize the space, minimize the weight. Once you're below the threshold of 16 ounces, that's when shipping is very, very cheap. 
You can see here on the low end, 274, on the high end, $5.70. Um, that would qualify for first class uh, parcel, first class package. So it will take a little bit longer, but if you can get it under 16 ounces, uh, you're in a good spot because you're not gonna be killing yourself with shipping. Um, and then on the top there, there's some of the flat rates. So flat rates are very interesting because it, it sounds appealing, right? It's a flat rate, it's not gonna change. Um, over, it may change over time, you know, once every year if they hire their prices, but you know that if you send out a box here to point A or to point B, it's gonna be the same price. Um, and you really wanna think about it and use these, these charts here because there is gonna be a point when a flat rate is gonna to be too expensive. And then there is gonna be a point when flat rate is, is gonna be like the, the no brainer option. So you really wanna look about what it is that, that you're shipping, where it's going. A general, general rule of thumb here is if you're sending out something that's heavy, you're sending out something, you know, you're in California, it's going to New York, coast to coast. That's what's gonna really drive the cost. If you're sending out something heavy and it's going pretty far, flat rate is most likely gonna be the best bet. But if you're sending something, you know, down the street in the same county, in the same state, and it's very, very light, it's under 16 ounces, maybe it's even a pound, you want to take a look at these charts. You want charts. You want to compare pricing to see if it makes sense. Most likely, flat rate isn't going to be your best bet because if you see up there, what do we got? We got seven dollars and forty-five cents, right? Seven dollars and forty-five cents is your cheapest rate on a on a flat rate envelope. Um, if you look at the first class pricing, everything is cheaper. So I have actually spoken to people before that were only using flat rates because they thought it made sense because it, it's it's saving them money because it's easier. Turns out they were, they were I wanna say it was about a dollar. They're wasting about a dollar in each package. They're sending out hundreds of packages per month. That's a lot of money over the course of a year. So um, how to minimize costs, that kind of uh, sums everything up. Again, don't, you know, don't be discouraged because this is something that is not gonna be done on day one. It may not even be done um, you know, within a few months. It's gonna take some time to dial in these costs, but make sure to use our resources that we provide as far as pricing and then the platform as well. Make sure to always have all of your carriers on, carriers on and, and see who's gonna give you the best rate. But you're in a good spot because the, the, the first thing to do to minimize costs is come to a company like Shippo where we've done the work for you and we provide you these heavy discounts right away, okay? Thanks, Sergio. Um, and then along with packaging and costs, very, very relevant to COVID times is how you get your package out there. Uh, Leon, we'll come to you about carrier pickups and how that all works. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Now that Sergio has taught us, you know, how to pick out the right box and you've got to ship a label on your box, I think the, the next question naturally is how do I get this package to the destination where it needs to go? Can I schedule a carrier pickup or do I have to drop this off at the post office? Um, well, you can do both ways. Uh, if you have a prepaid ship label, you can drop off that package at the carrier office without any additional charges. But given the current landscape of things and with COVID-19 and people wanting to avoid crowds, you can also schedule a pickup with USPS and DHL right through Shippo. And how you do that is you go to your shipments tab to schedule that pickup. You just have to fill out the information and you're good to go. Um, please keep in mind that when you do schedule a pickup, it takes an average of 12 to 36 hours for this pickup to happen. So if you have a package that needs to go out today, I would recommend dropping that off at the carrier office. And another note to make is that if you're shipping out more than five packages, five USPS packages, and you want to schedule a pickup, you'll be required to fill out what we call a scan or a manifest form. And what that basically is, is just a single sheet of paper with the barcode that contains all of your package information on that one sheet of paper. This is gonna help out your postman tremendously because instead of having to scan each individual package, they just scan one barcode, barcode excuse me, and you're good to go. And so you can fill out a scan form after creating all of your labels. And just like scheduling the pickup itself, you can do this within the shipments tab on the Shippo interface. One thing to note though about scan forms is that you have to create your scan form the same day you're creating your labels. So for example, if you have 20 packages that are going out, 10 today and 10 tomorrow, you will need to create a scan form for each of those days. So 10, uh, a scan form for the 10 that's going out today and a scan form for the 10 that are going out tomorrow. And so to summarize all this great information that I gave you, there's really two ways that you can get your packages out the door and to your customers. You can drop it off at your carrier office or you can schedule a pickup right within Shippo. 
Awesome. Thanks, Leon. Um, and I'm going to come right back to you to talk about insurance. An additional thing to packages and making sure that nothing or not making sure nothing happens to them, but if something does happen to them, there is some level of protection. Yeah, definitely. As a merchant, you want to protect yourself, but you also want to protect your customers as well, should your package get damaged, lost, or stolen. And so Shipple and our carrier partners, we do provide insurance options. But before we get into Shipple specific insurance, there's one thing that I like to mention. If you're shipping with USPS Priority Mail or Priority Mail Express, you'll automatically get $100 of coverage. If you're shipping with a different carrier or you're shipping something over $100, you can add additional coverage right within Shippo. And so the great thing is that with Shippo, we've partnered with Shipsurance, which is one of the top logistic and parcel insurance insurers in the industry. They're very, very transparent and really quick when it comes to claims because they put customers first. They understand exactly how important and how meaningful each one of your packages are. And so they'll do all of the heavy lifting for you. And so ship insurance, the way they work is they work directly with the carriers. So ma no matter what carrier you decide to use, it's gonna be the same and easy claims process for you. Now, you're probably thinking, wow, this sounds amazing, Leon. What's it gonna cost me? Well, for each package or label that you're creating, within Shippo, you'll see an option to add insurance. You can add up to $10,000 of coverage, and it's gonna cost you either one or 1.25% of the total coverage amount. And the difference between that depends on which plan you're on. So it's gonna cost 1% if you're on the professional plan and 1.25% if you're on the pay-as-you-go plan. And so if you're shipping a lot of packages that need to be insured, for example, you know, jewelry companies, or if you're selling something very expensive like a uh, coin company, then the pro plan will save you a lot of money in the long run. And so to summarize, if you're using USPS Priority Mail or Priority Mail Express, you automatically get $100 worth of coverage. Anything outside of that, you can always lean on Shippo for additional coverage. Awesome. Thanks, Leon. And we've already touched about it. I mean, touched on it um, a couple of times today. Uh, we have mentioned multiple carriers um, from USPS to UPS. Um, and it's really something that you can take advantage of in Shippo. Sergio, walk us through how they do that. Yeah. <clears throat> so optimizing um, across multiple carriers. Um, so this one's interesting. So what we do here is we are going to offer options. Um, so we're going to give you options for USPS, UPS, and DHL built-in. There's there's nothing you have to do. You'll get those discounts immediately. So the the real key here is like you know how to optimize is is really to be utilizing all of them. Um, some people tend to you know maybe turn one off. They're not familiar with it. They didn't like it in the past. Whatever it may be. Um, or they're just maybe confused by the situation and they happen to turn them off. But what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that these carriers are, are always on because everyone has a specialty. Um, each carrier is gonna kind of do something special for you. Um, and there isn't gonna be a clear winner every single shipment. Um, you know, USPS isn't gonna provide the quickest, cheapest rates every single time. Um, neither is UPS and neither is DHL. So you really wanna have these available so you're not missing out on an option that may be relevant. And just to kind of give you an overview of their you know, specialties, um, when you think about it, USPS. USPS is going to be your best, best bet if you're looking for money savings. Um, typically, they are going to be cheaper for the smaller, um, lighter items. Um, almost always up to, I would probably say about 10 pounds. Once you get up to roughly about 10 pounds, that's when USPS starts becoming very, very expensive. And that's when UPS makes sense. So USPS, essentially their specialty is something that's cost effective for smaller items. Uh, they usually don't have like guaranteed transit times and some of their standard like first class parcel can take quite some time. So their specialty really are small items, money savings, uh, small light items for money savings. Uh, when you're talking about bigger items, heavier items that are going pretty far, that's when UPS is going to be the winner. When you start to get roughly about you know 10 pounds i would say that's when ups is, is roughly half of what usps is so ups's specialty there is that they're going to be good for heavier bigger items and then also they have 
guaranteed service levels. So UPS does offer two day air. They offer three day, three day. They offer overnight. They offer overnight AM, early, saver, things of, these, of this nature. So UPS, their specialty is getting items to their location as fast as possible. And then they're gonna be a better price point when we're talking about big packages. And then lastly, DHL. DHL kind of like doesn't really apply to any of that. Essentially, DHL, their real specialty is that they are going to provide options for everything. DHL will only be available for international, but you can bet that DHL, they're going to get your items to their location. There are times when you go into the system and maybe you're sending to somewhere that's either very remote or not, not, you know, not a very common area. DHL will most likely be the only option. So their specialty there is essentially punctuation and just availability. They'll deliver anywhere. They are a global um, company. So sometimes they will have an option when USPS or UPS won't. Um, and again, really important to have these both of these on because there are going to be times when UPS will be a winner. There are there will be times when USPS will be a winner. So definitely have them on to take advantage of their of their specialties. Um, and optimizing here again, coming to a company like Shippo is crucial because we are saving you a ton of time by doing this work for you. With our accounts, for example, UPS, we don't charge uh, residential fees; they're waived. Uh, fuel surcharges, those are also waived. This is, these are things that, you know, would take very high volume and a lot of time to establish as an independent company. So again, step one, utilizing a company like Shippo that's done the work for you, that's providing these discounts and then um, utilizing them. And really cool in Shippo without doing anything special, Shippo will always choose the cheapest rate. So if that's really what you're looking for, it will do that for you. If that doesn't make sense to your business model and you need a default, you can also choose a default as well. Um, I deal with a company that ships food and everything has to go minimum two day. So they've set their default to two day. But if money savings is your thing, don't touch anything on the back end and we will always choose the cheapest option for you, okay? Awesome, thanks Sergio. And you already kind of segued us to it, but we've seen kind of an uptick here. Uh, so we added it to kind of the breakdown of what to think about when you're starting to ship online. And that is international um, labels. Leon, walk us through how this all works. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, that's a very, very great topic to, to talk about, uh, especially as we enter the holiday season here. Um, so I think anyone that has shipped anything internationally from the post office, probably understands that with all the paperwork, it can be confusing, it could be a hassle, and just not a pleasant experience. But the great thing about Shippo is we make that process very, very easy for you as we do the paperwork for you on the back end. Um, if, when you, so just to clear it up, in order to get your package shipped for international shipments, you will need to fill out a customs declaration form that includes information about your package, um, so that includes things like the item description, the cost of the item, uh, the country of origin, the destination country, et cetera, right? And so if you're on an e-commerce platform, the great thing about Shippo is we'll source all that information and have it automatically applied when we see that it's an international shipment. Now, if you're creating, a, if you're not a, on an e-commerce platform or you're creating a one-off label or you're doing a CVS, CSV upload, you can always add that item information and your package will be good to go. So there's one thing to keep in mind here. Um, taxes and duties are not included. There's no way that we can calculate that prior to your shipment. And the way you're charged for that is at the border crossing. And so either you or the recipient will be charged for that package as it crosses the border. So DDU is when the recipient is billed and DDP is when you are billed when the package crosses that border. And more specifically, USPS, USPS only offers DDU, whereas um, DHL and UPS offers DDP as well as DDU. And so to sum this all up, because I know it's a very, very, um, <laughs> a very uh, interesting topic to talk about, and it's not as easy to navigate as uh, other I issues. Paperwork, confusing. Shippo makes that paperwork a lot more easier. And we also have great rates with UPS, DHL, and UPS. 
Awesome. Thanks, Leon, for walking us through that and breaking it down a bit more. I'm actually going to come right back to you because we've talked about, you know, a couple of things here now, um, your package that you want to use, how you get it out there, pricing, um, thinking about international and insurance. But uh, one of my favorite topics is uh, when I order online and I get that notification that uh, my order has been placed and I've got a tracking number. Um, walk us through notifications. It's my favorite thing. Yeah, of course, Joe. And I think you share that sentiment with a lot of people, um, a lot of consumers that when you order a package, the first thing you're looking for is the order confirmation and then the tracking number. So you know when your package is coming. One of the amazing thing about Shippo is that all of your packages will automatically have a tracking number associated. So you can send this information to your customers. And there's essentially two ways to go about getting this information over to your customer. The first way is through your e-commerce platform. And so when you create a label in, in Shippo, the tracking number will automatically be populated and Shippo will source this information about the shipment into your e-commerce platform so that the tracking number and the delivery confirmation is communicated to your customers really, really simple. The second way is you can send out notifications directly in Shippo. As long as you have the email ad address, you can send uh, notifications at the time of label creation, as well as when the package is delivered. So really keeping your customers in the loop throughout the entire process. And I know your customers are just going to love that. And so you can set this up to go out automatically, or you can manually trigger these notifications to go out on a one-off basis. So to quickly summarize this, there's two ways that you can send out tracking notifications. You can do it through your e-commerce platform, or you can do it right in Shippo. Whichever one you choose is really up to you. They're both great options. Thanks, Leon. And um, this rarely happens to me when I buy things online, um, but if it is something that is part of your business or um, you want to include as part of your business. Um, we also offer the ability to handle returns. Leon, why don't you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, and I mean, returns can be tricky and sometimes unpleasant for both the merchants and the customers, right? But it doesn't have to be because the way I see it, you can use returns as a branding experience and really increase the lifetime value of your customers. To give you a really good example, if anyone has ever ordered anything from Nike, they automatically re, uh, include a uh, return label because they know that if something doesn't quite fit you the right way, you can send it back and you're more likely to purchase from them again. And so returns, I know they sound like a really bad thing for your business, but it, but it could be a blessing in disguise, right? And so with returns, Shippo has you covered in two ways. The first way that you can simplify your returns process is to completely automate this process. So when you create an outbound label, meaning you're slapping, you're creating a label to slap on your package to send out to your customers, you can automatically create what we call a scan-based return label. And the reason it's called scan-based is because you're not gonna get charged for it unless that label gets used. So you can include this in your packages. So when, when your customers receive the package, they have the option of starting that returns process without ever, ever having to talk to you or, you know, um, giving you extra work to, 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 to handle that. And so that's the first way. The second way is that let's say you don't get a lot of returns, but sometimes you do on, you know, on a one-off instance, then you can also, also generate the return from uh, in a one-off scenario. So you can create single return labels directly within your orders dashboards. You can generate that PDF and send it over to your customers. And then they could just send the package right back. Super, super simple. And, really depends on you and your business model on which way you want to use. So to summarize, you can create return labels on a one-off basis, or you can have this completely automated and include it in your outbound packages. Thank you, Leon, for walking us through returns. And I think at this point, we've gone full circle, choosing a package for your, or the right package for your product, um, choosing all of the different uh, nuances such as um, the carrier you want to use, how you're going to get your package out there, insurance notifications. So we've broken it down step by step, but we purposely left the one of the most important steps for the very end. Um, and that's how you get your product information into um, Shippo 
the platform in order to do all of those things. And for, for that, I'm going to go to Sergio to break that down for us. Sorry, just answering, uh, answering some questions in the chat there. So connecting your store, this is, this is very important because this is, this is one of the main, main things that we do. Um, this is why we're special because we have the ability to connect to stores. Um, you know, there's proprietary software out there through the carriers that do not, you know, if you're using WorldShip, um, if you're using Ship Manager, those platforms, they do not connect to your store. So how do I connect my store? Well, when you're signing up for Shippo, if you're a brand new user right now, if you were to go into our website and sign up, it's going to walk you through the process. It's going to ask you if you're on a store and then you say, yeah, I'm on Wix, I'm on Square, I'm on whatever. When you click on that store, it's going to walk you through the process to connect it. Um, the, the majority of the stores are really just going to ask for username, password, excuse me, and then permissions. Some will ask for something a little bit more special like an API key whether that's coming from Shippo or maybe the store, but it's very simple. And again, these step-by-step -step instructions will be there present. Now, if you already have an open account and you didn't go through that process, you can simply just go to settings, stores, and then connect store um, on the top right. The GIF right there is actually displaying that in real time. So you would do that, scroll down, find your store, click on it, and then follow the instructions. So it's very simple. And of course, we're going to connect with all of the major uh, platforms out there. So I'm talking about Shopify, WooCommerce, BigCommerce, Wix, Square, Amazon, Etsy. We're going to connect with all of those. So now you're probably thinking, some of you, I don't have a store. I don't, or maybe I don't have a store that you mentioned or that's on the list here. That's not a problem either. We offer a few options. So what we can do is we can get those orders from your store and we can add them in a Shippo via CSV file. So it's a very, very common, I would probably say, honestly, 99.9% .9 of the e-commerce platforms in existence give you the option to export your orders in some fashion. Most likely it will be a CSV. So what you would do is you would, uh, you would export that CSV with your orders from the platform, and then you would import the CSV in Shippo so you can have your orders display like normal. So that's an option if you either have something custom or maybe just something that's not supported, or maybe you don't even have a store. You have some type of system where it goes via email, you take orders over the phone, it's, you know, walk-ins, things of that nature. If you manage those orders on a CSV, you know, through Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel, um, you can get that CSV file, upload it into Shippo, and then you have your orders. And then also uh, for more, for companies that are a little more technical, uh, we do offer Shippo as an API. So Shippo has an API. So if you have something that's maybe supported, maybe you have some, some custom Shopify store, or maybe you built out your own e-commerce platform or marketplace, we have you covered there because we offer an API and you can make a custom connection. And then of course, the most manual process, we do give you the ability to just create an order in Shippo and a label. So maybe you have, I don't know, maybe it's like a replacement part um, or maybe you're sending out something personal for a relative, you can still generate labels through Shippo. So keep in mind, a store is not required. That's a question that gets asked a lot. So you do not need to have a store presence online in order to use Shippo. You can create manual labels. So to circle back there, how do you connect the store? Shippo will walk you through. You can go to settings, store, connect. Uh, if you don't have a store, we give you options via our API. We give you options via CSV upload. And then we give you options to just manually create the labels um, or orders out of thin air. Okay. Awesome. Thank you both for walking us through everything. And I think at this point, we've broken down all of the little steps you have to think about when you are just bringing your store online. Um, I think Sergio and Leon have been answering questions in that Q&A box, but we'll leave a little bit of time so that we can answer a few more live if you two want to take it away. For some reason, I can't click on the Q&A box right now. <laughs> yeah, no problem. All, yeah, we can, we can kind of uh, tag team these. Um, so I have them up and I'll just go, I'll just go in order here, um, answer them live. So, um, from Kisha. Uh, I ship patch packages physically from my city of residence, uh, but my company slash return ad address is in a different city. I'm able to calculate postage from my city of residence, but only display uh, my return address on the label. 
Uh, so you can um, have different addresses. So you can have a sender address and a return address. Um, those can be different. So on the label, it should be the return address because it, it, it would need that just in case. So yes, you can calculate the postage with the sender address and then you can have a different return address on the label, okay? Um, and it's very easy. You would just go to, um, you would just go to settings addresses and then in the address, little address book there, you can you can um, distinguish them, okay? Um, so Alyssa, thanks for your help. It would definitely be better if the screen was easier uh, to show. Yes, I highly agree. Um, how do I handle returns? Takes up half the screen, so it's hard to see. Um, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what you're asking. As far as returns go, it's pretty simple. Um, you would just go to the order. So find the, excuse me, shipment. You would just find the shipment in your shipments page. And then on the far right, there's a drop down that you click and it says create return label. Uh, once you click on create return label, it'll walk you through the process, how to create the return label. Um, it's step by step. So that's all you need to do. Click create return label and we'll walk you through it. Okay. And so when you connect your store, is my customer info used by Shippo for anything other than shipping? Uh, correct. Yeah, it is. Well, no, it is not used for anything other than shipping. Uh, we definitely will not, uh, you know, sell your data um, or spam your customers at all. Of course, we do have that customer information on the servers for obvious reasons, but we do not do anything with that data. So no worries. We're a very secure company and we take that seriously. Um, so Kevin can ship out generate UPS or FedEx labels that are billed to the customer third party billing. So this one's kind of tough. It, it's like a yes, or it's like a yes slash no. So we don't have the actual functionality for full blown third party billing. There is ways to orchestrate it. So for example, if it's in theory, if it's someone that you work with a lot, you could add their account with permission. You can add their carrier account into Shippo. And then you can distinguish it and say, you know, this is client A and know that it's their account. So when you're purchasing that label, it will bill to that account. So it's not labeled third party billing, but that's kind of a workaround. Um, so yeah, we would probably try and refrain from doing that, but it is possible. Um, let's say, uh, Leon, do you want to do the next few? Leon? Sorry there, I couldn't find the mute button for a second. No worries. <laughs> um, so next question we have, let's see. Hi, I have an e-commerce with Cargo Collective. Is it possible to connect with Shippo? Um, I don't believe we have a direct integration with Cargo Collective. Is that right, uh, Sergio? Um, it does not, uh, I, I'm double checking right now. That's That doesn't sound familiar. Um, I do not, I do not think so. It does not look like we offer that. We don't have a native integration. We don't. Yeah. Yeah, but if you're on Cargo Collective, you can always use a CSV upload um, to get your package information into Shippo to get those labels generated. Correct. All right, next one. My API is connected into Shippo with Shopify, but I do not see it under apps. Sergio, do you want to take this one? Uh, my API is connected in a Shippo with Shopify, but I do not see it under apps. Um, yeah, so if you're connected via the API, it's it's not going to show under, it's not going to show anything like on the Shippo side. If you have a direct integration with it, of course, it'll say that Shopify is connected. But if you've connected it through the API, like built out an API integration, it will not say that. Um, this one, that, that is a little tough. So I do recommend if, if anything else pops up there um, or if you need assistance, please reach out to our support team via the live chat on our website. Um, unfortunately, we can't diagnose that um, here live on the webinar. I apologize. Um, and let's see here. So Holly, um, let me see here. I was asking more about requesting package pickups at a residential home. I pay $15 to have a UPS truck come to my house. Sometimes it's not always convenient to drive down. Um, I, I think you were, I, I think we answered like a part of this question earlier. So the way it works, um, USPS, we have the functionality built in. You can get, you can request pickups in Shippo for USPS and it is free. Um, unfortunately with U, UPS, we don't have that functionality built in. Um, so with UPS, you would have to drop off um, your UPS packages, or you can contact them directly and try to request um, a pickup, but it's a little difficult since the account is ours. Um, but yeah, you would, I would recommend either dropping it off or reaching out to your local office or branch, I should say, 
um, and and seeing if they could uh, do a pickup. Okay. Uh, okay, so what do we have here? Melissa, how do I use different drop shippers plus uh, my own fulfillment? Should I be upfront in terms of packages coming in for different shipments? Um, so this one's difficult. We don't really have like a, a built-in drop shipping solution. Um, there's ways to really build this out with the API, but it's just not something that's turnkey out of the box. Um, some, cust some companies that I've worked with pretty much give access, they'll, they'll create an additional user. So they'll give access to other drop shippers uh, to Shippo. So they'll give them access to fulfill orders out of those locations. You can simply just change the sender address to reflect that, um, to, to get an accurate rate. So we don't have anything built in that is specific for that, but that would be the workaround there. Um, let's see, Connie, where's the best place to get boxes or packages? I would recommend Amazon, Uline. Um, and if you want anything custom, go to arca.com, A-R-K-A.com, okay? Uh, Leon, do you wanna go ahead and, and do a few of these? Yeah, let's see. Um, will Shippo use my default locations or can I split locations based on inventory? 70 locations. So we can certainly uh, split locations. I don't know about the max numbers do you think 70 is okay, Sergio? Sounds so as far as as far as the address book goes, I like your sender location. I haven't seen an exact limit. Um, it would probably be hard to manage, you know, 70 locations. It'd be a little bit of scrolling. Um, but Shippo does not provide any logic to filter or route those orders based on locations. You would have to be filtering them manually. Awesome. Next question. Is there a way to merge all the labels so they print out at once? So you can print labels, obviously, on a one by one basis, but you can also print them in batches of 100. Um, when you purchase and print labels in batches of 100, it will be a PDF file with all of them uh, in one single file. So you won't have to print multiple uh, pieces of paper. Or labels for that matter. Um, next question here. If I wanted to offer free shipping over $50, how would that work? So unfortunately, you, you cannot designate this in Shippo. This is something you would have to do on, the, on your e-commerce platform, um, depending on which one you're on. Um, there's uh, fields that you can fill out, certain criteria that will trigger. Uh, for example, if an order value is over $50, you can apply zero shipping charges. Next question here. How do I check on how much I spent on the postage of an already shipped item? So you can go to your shipments tab um, and you could also go to your billings tab and you will see how much you paid for that label. How will Ship will help me when I use USPS on GoDaddy? Sergio, mind taking this one? Yeah, yeah. So um, it, it's, it's nothing specific to GoDaddy. Uh, we are going to offer USPS uh, discounted rates for everyone. We do have an integration with GoDaddy. So you would start on your GoDaddy side, very easy. Uh, find an open order, click on create shipping label, and it'll take you to Shippo and it'll walk you through the process. Um, so we will help you um, by providing you heavily discounted rates with USPS, okay? Awesome. Next question. When it asks for the dimensions of a of a package, if I were using a poly mailer, would I use the dimensions once the package is filled or unfilled? I would assume filled because it asks height. You are absolutely right with your assumption. You will need to fill out a height. If you're using a poly mailer, take the thickest part of the, the package and that will be your height. Next question here, could you please expand on this part of your answer? Also, Shippo would not distinguish slash filter the orders to locations. And the second part, is can we work with Australian posts in that location? I'll defer to you on this one, Sergio. Yeah, I, I, I answered that one earlier. So we won't distinguish or filter the orders to locations. So if you have a, a distribution center, you have two distribution centers, one's here, one is there. There's no logic that says, oh, this order needs to be fulfilled from point from this location. And then this order needs to be fulfilled from here. You would have to do that manually. So we do not create the logic to send orders to certain locations. Um, and can we work with Australia Post in that location? So we, we, we support um, 
we support um, Australia Post. So, or excuse me, we in Australia, we have support for um, Fastway, Sendle, and Couriers Please. And I want to say, and Australia Post. Yeah. So, Australia Post, you would have to add your own account. Uh, we have Fastway, Sendle, and Couriers Please. There's nothing like, I, I don't believe there are any special discounts of those, but those are available. Australia Post, yes, you can add your own Australia Post account. <clears throat> um, anonymous, this will be automated, multi-locations. I think this is going back to what I said earlier. Um, short answer there is no, unfortunately, we, we just do not route um, based on location, okay? Um, so I need to print labels one by one. Is there a way to at least have the return labels on a different page? So you don't need to print labels one by one. You can, or you can do a batch. So you would just select all the orders you want to print. And then on the bottom, right, it says print 50 labels, 75 labels. So no, you do not need to print them one by one. Um, and to have return labels on a different page. So if you do it together, if you do the return label together, it's, it's going to be together. Um, if you want it on a different page, you can just create the label, the outbound, and then create the inbound, the return label separately. Okay. If you want them on a different page. Um, can you do an example of syncing? What it looks like when it syncs. I'm synced to Amazon. Nothing shows up when I press sync. Um, uh, Tyler, please, please uh, reach out to our support team. Highly recommend going to goshippo.com um, right now. And on the bottom right, there should be a chat bot. Um, and, and it will connect you with someone. Unfortunately, we, we don't have access to accounts like that right now. So I do apologize. Um, go to the chat bot on the bottom right and they'll look into why um, your orders are not syncing with Amazon. I apologize. Next question from Christine. Please talk about how you do invoice on pay per use. So I'm assuming you're talking about the pay as you go plan. And so the way Shippo uh, billing works is that you'll be charged either on your first $100 spent or every hundred dollars spent or every seven days, whichever comes first. The only exception to this rule is the very first time you use Shippo, you, be, you will be billed for your first $25. But every instance after that, you'll be billed for every hundred dollars or every seven days, whichever comes sooner. Do yeah, you want to go ahead, Leon? I'm, I'll, I'm going to answer some of these um, via the chat. Yeah, so I have a sounds like a comment here. Sorry, what I was trying to explain was the heading of what you're talking about it takes up half the screen. So it was hard to see the Shippo page screen. We'll keep that in mind for the next one. Next question. Are there experts to set this up for us with all the details involved in multiple locations? I think this might be a question for you, Sergio. Um, so Billy, are there experts to set this up for us with all details involved in multiple locations? So, I mean, I, I, I'm trying to understand what you're asking specifically. Um, so, I mean, you, if, you're, if you build out something, the logic to support multiple locations, it would, it would be done through the API. And it's not exactly that the API does anything specific that will do that for you, uh, but we'll give you the data. So we'll give you the, the information. So if it's the labels, whatever it is, we'll give you the labels through the API for you to route through multiple locations. Um, if you want to talk further, definitely recommend going to our homepage, um, going to our homepage and clicking on contact sales. And then they that will route you to the right um, Shippo expert to give you a little more insight there. Okay. And so what else do we got here? So that one's done. Um, how long has Shippo been in business? Easy. Six years. Um, we're going to, we're going on seven uh, next early next year. Okay. So six wonderful years. And what do we have? Can my vendors pay for their labels instead of having my credit card on file within Shippo account? So your vendors, I mean, if they have accounts and you're using your own accounts, it will build to the account. So that's kind of taken care of. But if they're using one, if they're using your Shippo account and they're using any of our accounts, it's all going to go through whatever card is on file. Okay. Um, so what do we have here? Is there a way to save all addresses for the future? So um, we don't, we unfortunately don't have an address book built in. We're hopefully going to have that, you know, sometime in the future, but your browser will do that for you. So if you're using Google Chrome or Safari, it will save addresses for you. So the platform won't need to do that. Um, and then Danielle, can I integrate with my comment sold boutique? Yes, you definitely can connect uh, comment sold with Chippo. Um, there is a resource. If you just search comment sold Shippo, if you Google comment sold Shippo, 
Um, there should be one of the first results should have the step-by-step -step to get that connected, okay? Um, so this one we already answered. Mm -hmm. Answered, answered. I have coworkers that said they wanted to purchase from me but want to bring in the items. How do I void off the shipping cost? So they want to, per coworkers that want to purchase from me, I, I'm, I'm a little, I apologize. I'm a little confused by that. Um, I mean, there is going to be a shipping cost, whether you want to charge them it or not, that, that's totally on you. Uh, but we're not going to do anything specific in Shippo to, you know, orchestrate that. But to ship something, we will charge a fee. It will be charged on the account. Um, if you don't want to charge them or you charge it back, that's totally up to you. Um, apologize if I'm, I'm not understanding that correctly. Sorry. And is Shippo SOC 2 type 2 compliant? Um, that one's tough. I'm not sure if Joe maybe knows that. Um, that one's a little tough. I apologize. I do not know. I'm not sure either, but if you, I'll, I'll grab that. Oh, it's an anonymous. If you email in or chat in, we will be able to find the answer for you. Cool. And then anonymous, um, how do I download multiple labels at once without having to get two on each page? So again, if you, it's either or, if you don't want them on the same page, you would not be doing multiple labels. Um, if you want, if you want to do five at a time, they're going to print out in order. So if you have like a standard eight and a half by 11 and you print out five, um, you're going to have three, she three sheets of paper. So two are going to have two and then one would have one. Um, Dymo 4XL should be on a four by six. So um, that's not, that wouldn't be, that wouldn't apply to that. If you're using the Dymo 4XL, uh, they would, it would be a four by six uh, thermal label. So that would print individually um, to fit on my label sheets without doing screenshots. So what you would do, go to settings, labels, and then change the default to four by six thermal PDF. It's probably on uh, eight, eight by five, eight, eight and a half by 11. Um, cool. And I think that's it. Roger, uh, Roger, I, I do recommend if you're not seeing those options, um, please chat into our support team again, go shippo.com. And then on the bottom, right, you will see, um, you will see the, the chat bot there. Okay. Um, Sharond, Sharondel, uh, sorry if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. So that, that'll be our last one for today. So does Shippo auto make an invoice? Yes. So the invoices will automatically generate if you're using our accounts. If you use our USPS, UPS, DHL, uh, we will bill you every seven days or $100, whichever comes first. So again, automatic card on file. It will charge that card on file every seven days or $100, whichever comes first. Awesome. Cool. Thank you both for, or thank you both for going through all of that. Um, there were a few very specific ones. So if we didn't get to it, please reach out to support at um, GoShipo. Also, if you log into your account, there are options for you to reach out to us live. It'll be a little bit faster through there. We will get back to you as fast as possible. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Leon and Sergio, for your expertise through this all. Um, and I hope everyone has a great rest of their Friday and a great weekend. Bye, everybody. Thanks, everyone.